Praise God. Turn with me, if you will, to Romans chapter 12. Uh, the lesson of the years, verse, sort of verse number 14, because uh, this, this lesson really uh, impacted me. Uh, studying it a little deep, uh, because I had always read this scripture uh, to mean uh, uh, probably the surface level of what it meant and missed the meat of what it meant. Have you ever done that before? Have you ever looked at a scripture? And you were right about what you understood, but you, you just scratched the surface. And you just scratched the surface. Uh, and, and all that meat was in front of you. Uh, and then you hadn't eaten it. But then when you found it soil, you just died and couldn't believe it. Am I right? Isn't God good? God, God, can, God can show us reveal himself through his word. So allow me just a little time, uh, because I've eclipsed it. Remember last week I told you that Alvin is... Uh, he's an he's, he's outline, he's a, he's, a, he's a defender of the gospel, and I said, Brother Nash, when he preaches, you're looking at, you're looking at uh, 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 expository preaching, and then my preaching, and I humbly said, you know, I just have to do what I want to do, but actually, believe it or not, uh, I'm a proof text preacher, a gospel preacher, which is a little more technical because it requires one uh, to do more work in the exegesis of the text concerning the historical background and construct of the text. Uh, uh, and, and I'm comfortable with it, and it requires more scriptural use uh, uh, to prove a support versus uh, the defining uh, of the text as far as the words, but it's inclusive of all of it. And so in order to be a proof text preacher, you have to have a little everything in you. Uh, you have to have a little everything in you uh, as you deliver your message. But all of this stuff, according to 1 Peter 5, verse 11, that if any man preach, let him speak as the oracle of God, is given by the very breath of God. Uh, uh, and so God uh, will temple, he'll shape, he'll mold uh, the person into what type of preacher he needs uh, for a certain people, for a certain job uh, to get it done. And it's all, the glory all belongs to God and not we ourselves. Amen. Uh, and so, so none is better than the other. Amen. Uh, but God uses us in different ways. God uses you in different ways. Right now, God wants to use somebody here uh, to bring some, to, to let them know that God is worthy to be praised. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody here that's that looking around trying to figure out what in the world am I doing this morning, and what somebody ought to be doing is saying you praising God in spirit and in truth. And this is the house of God. And this is the day to worship uh, not a dead God, but a living God. Uh, God is alive and well on this room. This is with me, if you will. Oh, let me, let me just say before I get started. Uh, uh, the financial report, we, we're going to have to push it back to next week. But I absolutely promise you, and if you're not here, uh, I'll email it to you. Uh, but we have the financial report for six months in this year to give you accounting of where we are. Uh, also, to, to also refer to the building fund. Uh, when we took up money when the income tax season, some participated, some didn't. We moved some of that money, uh, the majority of that money, over to the building fund. It's still there. And so there's, there's money there, and then there's the operating costs, uh, but that'll be given to you. Uh, we wanted to get it done uh, to this, sun, this Sunday, but we had some technical difficulties, and we'll get that straightened out. So please be patient with us. Uh, but just know that we'll be responsible in getting you that financial report, uh, and, and pray pray that that won't disturb your worship too much. That's not going to bother me too much, is it? No, no, no. Hey, man, I mean, should Y'all, y'all, I give y'all the quiet. Yes, sir. Y'all are not cool. You, you about to get out of here in 20 minutes. Y'all gonna make me preach to have enough. Amen. Let's look at this text. Let's look at this text. All right. Romans chapter 12. Uh, starting at verse number 14. Romans 12. Starting at verse number 14. The text says, if it's possible, live uh, peaceably with all men. And I like the acknowledgement of the Holy Spirit because it says if it's, if it's possible. Sometimes uh, it, it's not as possible if you ever been there to get along with folk like you would be along with folk. So, some, sometimes, it's in your Bible. It's in your Bible. It's in your Bible. Romans 12. Are y'all there? Can y'all say amen? Amen. Amen. amen? I say, I got to know what you got to do. It's very true. Impossible. Uh, live peacefully with, with all men. Yes, sir. Contextually, the Jews and the Gentiles were not at peace with each other in the house of God. God had brought them into one church. He had brought them into 
one belief system. He, he had brought them into one way. And, and, and it's evident that, that, that his way was in the church. Uh, because the Bible declares in Romans 16 and 16, salute uh, each other with a holy kiss. For the churches of Christ uh, uh, salute you. Uh, but there is, there, there's, there, there is uh, uh, behaviors in the cultures coming together, like people from a different world. And the Jews did not accept the Gentiles, and the Gentiles did not accept the Jews. And, and there was animosity because uh, it wasn't that the Gentiles were wrong or anything. It was God's plan. Romans chapter 9 to declare it was God's plan to bring, uh, to branch them into the kingdom of God. Uh, the Jews felt privileged, and, and so so much that Paul had to write in Romans chapter 1, verse number 16, that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power unto salvation to the Jew first, but also the Gentiles. And so it was God's plan uh, that God would bring uh, uh, the Jews and the Gentiles and the Greeks all into one church. Yeah, it was God's plan, and, 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 and that the faith would come by hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 14, so then faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 10, the Bible says, I, would, uh, I, he said, I want to make perfectly clear to you that, 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 that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of God's righteousness, would all to establish their righteousness. There is temperament, there is anger, there is, there is misunderstanding, and there's about to be some fudge and moving in Romans chapter 12. Because the Jews don't want them in the church, and the Gentiles say, you can't stop me from being in the church. I guess I was a Gentile, and I want you to know, you can't stop me uh, from being in the church. And, and, and when you're going through stuff, and, and folk are looking at you, and saying, you wasn't with us, you're not one of us. And, and you're going through stuff, and you have trials, and, and tribulation, and folk messing with you, sometimes it's just not possible to be as kind and sweet and holy as you always are, y'all. I read it, but I, I didn't understand it. Uh, because the next thing he says, uh, 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 beloved, if, if you get angry, yeah. now listen to what he says. And, I, and I'm trying to get with this because he says, avenge not yourself, but rather, I want you to give space. Give space. Now I'm looking at this word, avenge, because it's, that's why I said it is possible for you to get this text that when folk mess you around, instead of getting upset, make space. Make space work. No! It, it didn't say get away from your wife or your husband. Make stop that kind of space. Jesus. 
But somebody took my wife. Mm. How you how you want me to sit down beside somebody who spread malicious rumors across the nation against me? Mm. I, I, what, what you mean? Let me back up for a minute. If you make space at the table, I'm getting ready to bless you right in front of him. Man. But I'm a saving God. Now how am I gonna bless you if you let me be God? But I'm also gonna bless him to let him see the God in you that's in me. I'm gonna bring both of you devils on over. Verse number 20. He 
said they built me for evil, but God, I'm meant for good. You're not listening to me. I know somebody you mad at right now, but all you're doing is pushing blessings they way. If you give space, God will bless you, and he'll bless them too, to see how good he is through you. God said, I'm going to use the very people. Yeah, I'm glad I lost a job. 
Hold on, no, it's not a notion. I'm not going to tell the truth now.